Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord is good. Amen. We used to sing that old song, The Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord he is good. God has been merciful and we praise him for all that he's doing in our lives this morning. Amen. 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 Trials and tribulations and challenges, but I love the promise. He'll never leave us. Never right. will he forsake us. And I appreciate everything that he is going to do. Let's get to this word. If you'll turn with me in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 as we launched our theme for the year. It's possible. We're going to deal in three phases, of course, and that is dealing with uh, we'll believe like it, behave like it, and battle like it. You've got to believe uh, that it's possible. I don't know what the it is. Uh, only you and the Lord know that. But whatever that is, it's, it's possible. It's possible for change this year. It's possible for a new direction. It's possible for uh, some things to be uh, promoted. It's possible for, for good health. I, 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 there's so many things... I, I do know there's so many wet blankets out here to put your fire out. I don't want to be a part of any of those wet blankets. I, I, I want to make sure that I am hot and ready for God Almighty. Because whatever he's going to do, he's going to do it. I want to make sure I'm a conduit so he can do it through me. I want to make sure I'm open so he can do it in my life. I don't know all the doors the Lord will open for me, but I need to be ready to walk through them. Let me say it again. I need to be ready. And I got a sneaky suspicion and a funny feeling you too need to be ready for the opportunity that God opens up to you. I'm preaching already. I'm ready to go. So, so we, we, we got to deal with it's possible. It's so possible with God. With God, all things are possible, church. And we're going to explore that all year long and just let God pour into us. And so we'll deal with it. We'll deal with belief. And then we got to deal with behavior. Because our behavior sometimes can be counterproductive to what God is trying to do. Amen. And, he's got, and he, he, he asks us to look at that. And it's going to be in the Bible. I won't make anything up. I promise you. And then finally, and by the time we get close to the end of the year, we'll deal with we've got to battle like it. Anything worth having, you got to have, you have to fight for it. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. My granddaddy used to tell me, he said, son, it's easy to tear something down. But it takes hard work to build it up. Amen. It takes time and hard work. And you and you you learn how to not only he would say you know it's easy to buy something but then he said it's the maintaining of it yeah. that takes the energy and the effort yeah. and, and thought and intention so so we, we've got a battle for some things in, in our Christian walk this year and I pray the Lord will give us the victory in it. Yes. Amen. So we're gonna start we're gonna preach through the book of Ephesians all year long. What we need is right there in that book. Mm -hmm. Book of Ephesians. We're gonna deal with that and today we're gonna deal with the book of Ephesians. Uh, chapter 1, dealing with verse 1 and 2, and uh, I uh, will turn this into a two-part message. Uh, today, we're going to deal with this. If you have your Bibles, again, it's on the screen if you don't, and purpose. And my sermon in the sentence, church, is this. If we live on purpose and with purpose, then everything that you do or whatever happens to you will have purpose. Amen. If we will live on purpose and with purpose, yes. everything and anything that happens to us and things that we do, church, listen, it will have a purpose. And you could tag that, that sentence with Romans 8.28, for we know that all things work together for the good of them who love God and who are called according to his purpose in Christ Jesus. Listen, it's so important, church, that we don't just live, but we live on purpose. Amen. And not just with our purpose, God has a purpose. Amen. Amen. God has a will. Amen. God, He will deal with this in the book of Ephesians, a great, a great chapter, a great book dealing with predestination and the foundation of the world, how God thought about us. God has a purpose for our life, and it is imp it was imperative that you and I link up to God to get what His purpose is for us. Yes. Yes. We can spend a lifetime trying to discover ourselves. And, and doing our own things, hitting and missing, but there comes a moment where you step back from you. You you actually have to do uh, what Jesus did to Peter. Say to the Lord, rebuke you, Peter. Okay. The Lord rebuke you. Yes. Get thee behind me. You have to rebuke yourself sometimes because you and I stand in the way That's of what God is trying to do right. and where He's Amen. trying to lead us and yes. the things He wants us to obtain in life. 
he pushes us that we should think about this as we deal with it's possible this year and, and what we believe. You got to believe that you and I have to live on purpose. Amen. 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 So I'm going to talk about that today. And I broke it up into two, two, two parts. We'll do it part two next week. But this morning I want to talk about living on purpose. Paul is writing to this Ephesian church. Paul is there. Uh, it's not in Ephesians. He's actually in Rome in prison. He's on trial for his life. And he's not going to make it out. And while he's there in prison, he has enough love for God and enough concern for the body of Christ that he, scholars say, there in prison, he wrote three letters. One was this letter of Ephesians. Another was the letter of Colossians. And the other letter was the letter of Philemon, or Philemon, however you want to say it, while he was in prison. It's possible that they, those representatives from those particular areas uh, were in his area, and so he took the time to write those letters. Most scholars will say you can find very, a lot of similarities between all three letters, Ephesians, Colossians, and Philemon. In those letters, he just pours his heart out about the church. Especially this letter in Ephesians because Paul goes down to Ephesians and he actually stays there two years preaching the gospel. He stays there and he just poured out his life and his soul to these people. And then when he had to leave, he left Timothy in charge of that church. So Paul is writing this letter, you know, a letter, a fatherly letter to his children just to give them some truths about the faith. And most say that the book of Ephesians is probably one of the, the best books written in the New Testament that deals with your, your doctrine, your belief, your behavior, so many facets of things that you and I encounter as Christians yes. that we believe and we have to war with. Paul really digs into it in the book of Ephesians, and that's why we're digging in, into it today. It has relevant application for us. Paul, he starts out just opening it up with a true fact and statement about his life, about his purpose. Here's what he says. He says, I'm Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Here's the first point I want you to write down, and probably the only point that I'll have because we'll do part two next week. This is what he says. The, pro the point that you're not going to walk away with is that, listen, uh, to, for us to live on purpose, we've got to purpose to live in God's will. We've got to purpose to live in God's will. He said, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, the apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God. It's enough to pause right there for Paul to say, I am an apostle of Jesus Christ. It takes Paul, it takes pause for us because if anybody, any of us know, or if you, you've been a Christian for any amount of time, you've heard Paul, you've heard about Paul's story, Paul's conversion, that Paul was not Paul always, his name was first Saul. And he was a terrible dude, a persecutor of the church. He was somebody that was bad, man. He was someone who was full of religious zeal. He was almost a Christian terrorist. Mm -hmm. He loved uh, the law a lot. And enough, he loved it enough to, keep, to have people put to death for it. He was a terrible person. And, and in this, he called himself doing God's will. And Paul says... For all of us today, listen, I just want to tell you, he says, I'm an apostle of Jesus Christ, not by my will, but by the will of God. Amen. Church, you and I have much purpose to live in God's will. When you were birthed, God stamped you with a will. That's right. And, you know, he, he sent you down from heaven, if you will, with instructions that, that, that angels, this is the will for his life. This is the plan for his life. And if they'll follow it, everything that I have in store will be opened up for them. Yes. And so he says all of us as Christians must live with that understanding that I'm not just living to be living. I'm living with a purpose. Amen. I'm, I'm going to work with a purpose. Amen. I'm raising my children with a purpose. That's right. I, I'm enduring trials and tribulations with a purpose. Yes. Nothing is by happen circumstance. Everything that it, when you understand that that there is purpose, you don't believe it just happens to you. You don't believe that luck is not uh, on your side. You don't believe in that crazy mess. What you say is everything that is happening to me, God's going to work it out for my good. Yeah, and everything yeah. that's happening to me, God wants me to learn something from it. Yeah. And everything I'm having to fight for is because God is trying to work something in me yeah. to make me stronger, to make me wiser, to make me smarter. Nothing that's happening will ever be a waste because why? You're living with a purpose. Yes, yes, that's right. Yes, 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 yes. 
And the purpose that you and I must connect to is God's will. That's right. Man, don't get ahead of yourself, Robert. That's why I want to tell you, don't give up on your children. I don't care what they have not done. I don't care where you want them to be and they're not there. With God, anything is absolutely possible. Yes. 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 And even when we make some missteps, some mistakes, and some mishaps, God is still able to still work out His will yes. for our lives. Yes. And just because you miss a turn or two on God's map for your life doesn't mean that God is done with us. He just does what a good um, a GPS navigator does. He just reroutes you yes. and gets you to go on a different path to where He wants you to be. Yes. And you say amen this yes. morning. Amen. So Paul says, listen to this. We must purpose to live in God's will. Here's how we must do that. He says, purpose to live in God's will, number one, regardless of your past. Next point, regardless of your past. He says, I am purpose to live in God's will. What, what, what I am today is because, it, what I am today is because of God's will. Amen. And because God desires this for me, you and I got to live on purpose regardless of our past. Paul persecuted the church. Paul killed yeah. godly people. Yeah. Paul was somebody who was wise in the scriptures, but he didn't have a relationship with Jesus. Amen. Paul was somebody who was devoted to religious things, but he had no relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Everything that was going on in his past, church, was really should really have been against his future. But God used his past yeah. to be a blessing to us here in the future. Amen. He was a wise person. Paul could speak many different languages as he was Saul. Mm -hmm. Saul did not give his heart to the Lord till he was an older person. Yeah. He didn't grow up as a Christian. He grew up as a religious person who uh, was into the law and who was intelligent, could speak different languages, and, and quote-unquote had basically master's and Ph.D. degrees. Those things he did, but listen, <coughs> listen, it should have worked against him because of his heart towards God and his people. Yes. But no matter what your past is, God can use it yes. for his glory. Yes. Yes. He took yes. that education and used it for his glory. Yes, he, he took the languages he could speak. He got part got hemmed up in a situation in the book of Acts. The Bible says he was yeah. talking to some folk and he recognized they were speaking a different language and he started speaking the language they were speaking and calmed the things down. Yeah. Listen, God can use All what right. you've been through and what has happened to yeah. you for yeah. his glory yeah. if you understand you are living with a purpose. Yeah. 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 When you understand that, man, nothing that has happened to you is oh me, oh my. It's, oh, God, you let it go down for a certain yeah. reason. Yeah. And God, I need you to help me to understand that. He yeah. tells us, listen, regardless of our past this morning, church, listen, you got to live in God's will. Purpose to live in God's will. Even though Paul's past didn't, didn't represent him as Saul, he wasn't a good representative. Right. God used everything yeah. that he had been through for our good today. Yes. Yes. And Paul wrote more than half of the New Testament. Yes. God gave Paul more revelations than anybody yes. about the second coming of Jesus, about what happens at death, about what happens um, with his, how God blesses. So many wonderful revelations yes. God gave to Paul because, listen, he kept on going regardless of his past. He even said something that, you know, he said, I, have, I haven't wronged any person. I haven't right. wronged anybody. Yes, he he could say that because Christ had worked something new in yes. his heart. Right. Yes. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that says, Therefore, if yes. any person, man or woman, be in Christ, they are what? A new creature. A new creature. Uh, uh, he, say, he says, all things are passed away, and behold, all things have become brand new. The church, that's what we must do. We must purpose to live in God's will regardless of our past. He forgives us of our sins and wipes our slate clean. Mm -hmm. And you and I can do what he's called us to do. But quickly, I won't hold you long. Here's the second thing I see. As we purpose to live in God's will regardless of our past, but we've got to live, purpose to live in God's will regardless of our current position. Mm -hmm. He says in verse 2, he says to the saints who are in Ephesus, we just deal with the part of Ephesus, to the saints who are in Ephesus. You know, uh, most uh, experts say if you want to uh, have good business or have good foot traffic in your business, they said one of the things that helps you is location, location, location. Yes, right. That if you got the right location... You, you, you can make a lot of money. You can get a lot of foot traffic. You can get a lot of business if you've got the right location. Well, it's right in business sense, but, you know, when it comes to you and I as Christians, 
Location does not necessarily mean uh, uh, that you and I are in or out of God's will. Right. Our location is not necessarily the barometer of whether or not God is on our side or He's not with us. Or we're in God's will or outside of God's will. Because here Paul is talking, he is in Rome in a jail cell. Right. Now, according to prosperity theology, it says that we are blessed based on what we have and what we got and maybe how much money and prestige, material, materialism, a lot of material things. But Paul would look at you and look at me and say, I may be sitting in prison, but I'm more blessed than you. And Paul, he said, I might be sitting on death row, but I want you to know I have blessings that I don't have room enough to receive right here on earth. Amen. Paul's understanding of where he was, where he is, had nothing to do, his purpose and will of God had nothing to do based on his location. Amen. Paul, when you read some of his letters, you'll say, see, Paul, Paul was in Ephesus. He was in Colossae. He was in Thessalonica. He was in uh, all these different places. He was traveling, doing what God told him to do. He's in God's will. Amen. Not only is Paul there, but then there are the saints who are in Ephesus. Right. That's their location. That's, right. That's where they reside. But where they reside, listen, God still has a will for them right there in Ephesus. Right, man. And you and I don't have to worry and be concerned about uh, what we have and don't have when it comes to doing and being in God's will. Amen. Scholars believe that he was in prison. Uh, whenever he wrote these three letters, Paul was beaten, abused, he was starved, he was stoned, he was in accidents on the ship when he was out there to be a shipwreck. Paul was naked, but all of those things, church, he was in the middle of God's will. Yes. Amen. You ask me what's the best location you and I need to be, I can tell you it's in the center of God's will. Yes. And sometimes God, the center of God's will is in a place of loneliness. Yes. I know, I know. Sometimes the center of God's will is yes. in the midst of a family that's a little off on the left, right side and a little off on the left side. Yes. The center of God's will sometimes is you being in the middle of some stuff and God's got you there because he, you're either there to deal with it or you're to learn from it. Whatever it is, sometimes the center of God's will isn't always comfortable. Amen. But that's the best place to be is in the center of God's will. Yes, yes. And so he helps us to understand that. In my devotional reading this week, I've been reading about Joseph and Joseph's life and what he, he went through. And when I think about it, Joseph was always in the center of God's will. Mm -hmm. When his brothers hated him and put him in the pit, he was in the center of God's will. Yes, yes. When they sold him into slavery and he had to work for Potiphar, and he was in, in, in slavery dealing with that situation and this Cougar comes at him and, 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 and says, wants him to sleep with him, her, and he doesn't do it. And he runs out and she frames him, saying he raped her. And when all that went down, he was in the center of God's will. And when Potiphar drug him down to the prison and put him in the prison, and he had to become the head in the prison, and he was there for, for I know more than two or three years. He was there a long time in prison. I want you to know he was in the center of God's will. Yes, yes. And, and then the time came when he moved from the prison and had to go to the palace. And listen to this now. He had to be, he has Hebrew roots, but he now has to go into the palace of the Egyptians. And God has put him in a place in secular society to do his will. And he's now the second in command because God was with him and he was always yes, in the center yes, yes. of God's will. Yes, yes. Sometimes you and I think what's happening to us is against us, but you got to know sometimes it's God keeping you in the center of his will. That's why y'all not be so quick to listen to, to everybody telling you to do this and to do that, to do this. I tell you, if you take time to pause and pray, God will let you know... Where he wants you to be in the center of his will. Yes, Lord. Your own children, you got to look at them sometimes. When they're doing some of the craziest stuff, yes. hardhead stuff, you sometimes you, you got to step back and say, Lord, when you put them in God's hands, that's all, church, you Amen. can do. Yes. And then God, please work it out. Help Hallelujah. them to stay in your will. Even if they digress and go off the course 
that you plan for them, God, my prayer is that they will end up in the center of your will. Yes, right. God, I'll be so bold, Lord. If they got to find you in prison, that's my prayer. Yes. If they got to find you in the hospital room, God, I pray my prayer is that they find you, is that you get more and change their Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you. Glory. God keeps us in the center of his will. Yes. We've got to live on purpose. But living on purpose means, church, we've got to purpose to live in God's will. Yes. Amen. It's so vitally important. If you and I get outside of God's will, we can lose time. And we can lose, we can lose strength in our hearts. I, one thing that caught my attention as I was reading this narrative about Joseph, I, I, I didn't read where Joseph was a, was a mad man. Mm -mm. I didn't read where Joseph cursed God. I didn't read where Joseph was hollering and screaming, "Why me, oh God? Why?" I, I, I did. I, I don't. I don't know if it was. I don't know if it was those dreams that he had when he shared with his brothers and his mother about him, uh, them bowing down to him. I don't know if it was those dreams that kept him going. He just felt like there was a purpose. It might have been when he was sold into slavery and he was working in Potiphar's house that everything he touched was. He saw he could, he can make things happen. I tell you, one of the signs of God's will in your life that there's some joy about some things that you do in life. You get joy out of it's. I don't know what it is. Matter of fact, you would do it for free. Yes. To show some of the things you you do it with joy and love, it's a yeah. part of God's will for your life. You can't abandon it because God put it in you yeah. for a particular yes. reason. There's a there's a reason. There's a purpose why it's there. You can't just abandon that. Oh, no. yeah. And so Joseph, I never heard where he got upset and mad and he cussed God out. Joseph Joseph was realizing that that everything was for his good. A matter of fact, church, the Bible says in Joseph's story. When he met his brothers again, because of what had happened, the famine that was in the land, his brothers came back to Egypt to get food, that Joseph was right there. And Joseph said to them, he looked them dead in the eye, he says, you know what, I'm not mad at you. He said, because what was done, it was done by God. He said. Yes, yes. I know you threw me there in there, but it was God's will. Had I not gone through the bumps and the yes. bruises, on, I would man. not be in second in command to yes. help save your yes. life. Yes. That's right. Yes. That's right. Thank you. So sometimes the situations we're in, we're upset about them, but you got to ask God, Lord, are, are you in this? Maybe you are about to use me to be a blessing, or uh, what I'm going through is so that I can be a blessing to somebody else. Amen. And then when J his, his, Jacob died, the Bible also says that Joseph, he made this last statement. He says, if the, the brothers thought for sure Joseph was going to get them. Yeah. And Joseph said to them, listen, you meant it for evil, yeah. but God is yeah. yeah. so It doesn't matter who does you wrong. You just need to understand whatever it, they meant it for evil, it was meant to hurt you, whatever that case is. But God, is, if God be for you. Uh -huh. uh, let me try this out. Let me. If God, come on, come on. If God, if God be for you, He's more than the whole world against you. That's right. Don't even, don't even pick up a victim mentality. Don't even, a child of God, don't even pick it up. It doesn't belong to you. God is on your side, and I'm not preaching pie in the sky. I'm not preaching phony baloney. I'm just trying to tell you, God is on the side of His children, and your life has purpose. And your life has meaning. Even, even in the challenges of your life, it's for a purpose. It's for a, re a reason, and you gotta see God in that. Don't even let it get you being out of shape. I'm done. Here's my last <coughs> illustration. I'm, I'm closing today. <clears throat> so we were, we were all family. We were in the church debacle. I used to attend a church called Northern Revival Tabernacle. And many of you attended that church with me. And and we had to leave that particular place. And planted this place here, Shepherd's Way, 2014. And I'm preaching for a while, I'm preaching for a while, but I, I notice um, my joy is, is, is fading. My happiness is, is dropping away. And, and I had to do self-inventory to see what was going on with me. And, and the truth be told, the, the problem was I was mad. Yes. Amen. I, was, I, was, I was upset. I was grateful for God's provision. I, I am. God, I was 
But I was losing sight of that. Yeah. That can happen whenever you, you're doing God's will. Uh -huh. That can happen whenever God's giving you direction and you start out on that direction and you keep hitting obstacle after obstacle. You 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 make two steps forward and not get knocked down a couple of steps back and you, you begin to lose the focus of what the Lord, the direction He told you to go into or the, the, what He told you to do. And I found myself getting angry inside because I said to myself, and myself said, yes, I agree with you. And that was, I shouldn't have, we shouldn't have had to leave. Right. And I was, God, that, that, this ain't, this ain't right. 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 This, this ain't fair. And when, when I step into church and I look at the sanctuary, it's not a large sanctuary. Those of you watching on camera, I keep the camera on me so you don't see how large the sanctuary is. <laughs> the sanctuary is a large we come from a 250 seat sanctuary to squeezing in 60, 65 seats in here. And I'm saying, Lord, th th Thank you. Lord, I don't have a place to bury God's people. I got to borrow somebody else's place. Lord, I don't have a place to baptize your people. I got to borrow somebody else's yes. place. And that thing was just, it, it, was, it was just really brewing in me. And I'm preaching, trying to preach past it, pray past it, but it's, it was getting to me because, God, I shouldn't be, we shouldn't have had to do this. Mm -hmm. And I remember one day I was driving in my car, heading to work, trying to pray. And as I'm praying, the, the Spirit of, of the Lord spoke to me very clearly and said, I'm not pleased with your attitude. Mm -hmm. and, and I want you to know something. I knew what he meant. Yeah. Okay. And I worked it out real quick. Yeah. 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 You, you know why I worked it out real quick? Because when... When I was in that state, every time something happened, it just feels like despair and depression. And, you know, don't let five of y'all be out one Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> See too many empty seats like right now, you just, you just start feeling some kind yeah. of way, you know. And, What's going and, 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 you know, God, did, is this your will? Did I make the right decision? Was this the right move? I mean, just all kinds of questions. And, and every time a challenge comes, it's the woe is me and woe is me, you know, woe is mine. I just can't. I, and, and then, and then, and then, don't get them mad with me, but Lord, these people, some of these people, hard headed, they, not, not, not talking about all of y'all, just some of them. <laughs> you're trying to help some of them, you're trying to tell them what to do, and they turn around and do the opposite of what you said. Yeah. I'm with you, Pastor, I'm with you, Pastor, and they get missing for uh, two months. And then you then 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 you you're preaching your heart out and, and during that time and, and and you're just thinking they get it and then people turn around and do the silliest things you could possibly think of and 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 they want you to counsel with all kinds of things I'm I'm woe is me and woe is I yeah but then God he spoke to me he said I'm not pleased with your attitude. And man, I, I got on my face and started talking to God. Lord, you got to help me turn this thing around. Yep. In my heart. Yes. And, and so so yes. now, now I keep seeing challenges, but I see them as opportunities. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. I, I saw that, yeah, I had a building, but now that I'm in this smaller building, now my faith and my imagination is being challenged. Now, mm -hmm. how can I make this thing stretch? How can I make this thing work? Yeah. How can I show yeah. God that yeah. this opportunity he gave me for a purpose now? Yeah. It didn't happen for no reason. Right. Right. Don't you be mad and fooled and upset that we're in this location for no reason at all. No, no, no. The God that I serve, yeah. the King of kings and the Lord of lords who holds all things in his hands, yeah. he has a purpose and a plan yeah. for every move that we make. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Every time something comes up now, I'm okay, all right, Lord, you, you're going to show me how to do this. You're going to show me how to make it. You're going to show me how to make this thing work over here. I'm going to prove to God I'm faithful at the little thing. Yeah. 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 I'm going to prove to him I'm faithful at the little thing. Yeah. I'm not going to let it. And, and, and that, don't let no preacher fool you. Most preachers get, we, we, we feel some type of way. We try to fight that spirit of competition, but it, 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 it's around the corner for us. How can my ministry be bigger? How can it reach farther? How can it be uh, 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 have more depth in it? it, it we, we struggle with that. But I, I made in my mind, listen, if I just do it God's way and, and, and work the little things yeah. he's given me, That's God right. will make it big enough sooner. Yeah. Hallelujah. And it's the same thing for our lives today. Yes. Whatever you're dealing with, whatever is in your hands, listen, use that, live, live with that thing with a purpose. Perfect. 
whatever challenge that is before you, use it as God. What is God's purpose for this thing in my life? Because it didn't just come by accident. It's not in my life for no reason at all. God knows how to, he even knows how to allow sickness to be there, but you still grow spiritually strong, even in the midst of sickness. God can allow financial lack to be in your life, but still your spiritual roots grow deep. You start praying stuff, you, you don't even have no money, but you still keep praying, God, you are my supply. You meet all my needs. God, you are still a way maker. Did he make the way? I yeah. haven't seen it yet, but I still know him to be a way yeah. He's able to do things that I cannot do. My yeah. trust is all in God Almighty. My yeah. faith is not in me. My faith That's is so in the living God. Yeah. He can do anything he wants to do what he wants to do. Hallelujah. And so I got to live with that on my mind. I got to live with that purpose. The opportunities, I don't let them pass me by because God, listen, it's a purpose for it coming in my life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Ain't it a purpose? Yeah. It's a real purpose. When we live, when we purpose to live in God's will, church, listen, we live on purpose and with purpose, no matter what happens to us, God, it will be for a purpose. Amen. It's going to be for a purpose. Amen. Every challenge we're facing is for a purpose. Every child you have an issue with, it's all right. It's for a purpose. Amen. God knows how to let things happen so that you and I will pray and seek His face. Yes. Yes. God will let things happen so you and I will lean and depend on Him. Yes. God knows how to let things go down so that, listen, no matter what you're facing, you still keep reaching out to the Lord. Because yeah. sometimes, I don't know about you, but I stop reaching sometimes. Uh -huh. yeah. When I get complacent, I stop reaching. Uh -huh. When we get complacent and comfortable, we stop reaching. When, when we're satisfied with self, we're no longer hungry for the Lord. Right. And what he allows sometimes, because he, he has a purpose for you, he allows things not to work out sometimes. Mm -hmm. Reverend, don't talk like that, Reverend. Don't talk like that, Reverend. Don't talk like that, Reverend. Come on, man. Everything is yes and amen. Sometimes the Lord will not allow it to work out because it's not his will and he knows it's going to hurt your body. And he loves you enough to let it collapse right in your face. Right. He loves you enough to let him slam the door right in your face. He loves you enough to let somebody walk out of your life. He loves you enough to allow things to happen because, listen, if it, it is your desire to please, Please God and to follow His will. He love you enough not to let it happen. Amen. 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 But a delay is not necessarily a denial. That's right. Just because God says no there doesn't mean He means no everywhere. That's right. That's right. Just because God says no to that man doesn't mean He. That's not a good analogy. That's not. That's not. Good that's not. Good yeah. Just no. Just no. All Just know God knows what door he needs to open for you. When he needs to open right. yeah. And I'll say this. I, I'll say this and I'm, I'm, I'm done. Listen, one of the worst things that, one of the things that bothers me so dearly as a pastor is that when you see God's people going the wrong way, when you see God's people not submitting to God's will, and I often can tell when they're getting outside of God's will, a couple things happen. Their attendance drops. That, that's one of the first signs that they get out of God's will. And then, and then, and then one of the other things that happens is they no longer call you or ask you for any advice. That means they've already chosen. They're, they got it in the back of their mind. This is not a good idea. This is not a God idea. But this is my idea. And if I ask too many questions, somebody might talk me out of what I'm about to do. So what I'm do is I'm just not gonna call nobody. Make people, make people think I'm being real spiritual, but I ain't gonna call nobody. I ain't gonna check with nobody. I'm not gonna. I, the Bible says there's safety in the multitude of numbers. So what I'll do is I'll isolate myself because there's something that I really, really, really want to do, and so I'm not gonna say anything. And what gets so so sad is I, I see that happening, and you, you try to plead with people, but they're not gonna learn until they go down that road. I'm not going to learn until they spend up that money, until they get into that relationship, until they do that thing that God is saying, don't do. They're not going to learn until it breaks down right there in front of their face. Mm -hmm. Man, God will let you, he'll let you scrape the bottom of the barrel mm -hmm. until you scrape up on him. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> let you sit in the dark until, <laughs> until the light come on in your head. I need Jesus. <laughs> 
Right. He'll let you stay at rock bottom until you yeah. until you just put a stake in it. I will never be back here again. Come on, man. Come on. Man. And how I know I won't be back here again is I'm gonna stop following my own way. Right. I'm gonna stop doing my own will, yeah. and I'll declare yeah. before the Lord in heaven. I'm gonna follow the Lord this time. If they leave me, I'm gonna follow the Lord. If they turn their back on me, I'm gonna follow the Lord. If I lose my job, I'm gonna follow the Lord. If it never works out, I'm gonna follow the Lord. Because if you ever follow God with all of your heart, He'll give you the desire. Hey, hey, and that thing, that thing you've been fighting for, God knows how to put it right in your hand. Matter of fact, it's David told me to tell you he prepares the table right there in the presence of my enemy. Then my cup will run us over. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life. That's what I know God will do. I said I know God will do it. But we got to live on purpose. Live on purpose. Every decision got to be a decision with purpose. Is this going to hurt God's purpose in my life? Is this going to slow God's purpose down in my life? Is this going to get me off track? At some point, you got to start saying to yourself, the life I've been living has been hurting God's purpose. And that's why I am where I am today. Amen. And I tell you, when you come to that realization, you can declare what Paul said in this letter. Paul, an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, listen, I'm not, 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 I'm not an apostle because of my past. I'm an apostle because, listen, he says, really what I've done. He says, I, I, I'm doing it regardless of my past. Mm -hmm. And I'm an apostle because also, finally, we said, it's regardless of his position. Didn't matter where he was. Sitting in prison. But I'm still in the will of God. Amen. 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 In the will of God. Yeah. Yeah. Let's bow our heads and let's pray together. Let's pray together. God, we thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for this word, God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, God. And as we take a moment for prayer and pondering and, and, and positioning ourselves, God, to hear from you in our hearts, God. Holy Spirit, make this word alive to us. God, I pray you would birth something in somebody today that I need to live on purpose and with a purpose. So that I can see that these things that are happening are for a purpose. God, I'm not a waste of time. You gave your son Jesus to die for me. And because of that, God, I can honestly say, God, I will live on purpose. Because you have purpose for me. God, so as we, we open the altar and as we pray and just we call out to you this morning, God, would you fill us with a sense of purpose this morning? Would you let purpose ring out in our hearts? Somehow, God, divorce us from our material things. Somehow, Lord, divorce us from letting materials decide how, how big our purpose needs to be and, and where our purpose needs to be, Lord. Help us to see that our purpose is in you, God. Yes. That no matter where we are, God, if we are in the center of your will, God, we're exactly where we need to be. Yes. Whether we're healthy or whether we're sick, whether we're rich or whether we're poor, God, whether we are known or whether we're unknown, God, if we're in the center of your will, I pray this day you wake that up inside yes. of us. Yes. As we open the altar for prayer, we give your name to praise today. In Jesus' name, everybody says amen. amen.